What is up, YouTube Tool Tubers of the World? My name is Brad. Welcome to the workbench. And I haven't had a tool haul in quite some time. I've picked up some pretty cool stuff, I think. If you're a mechanic, an electrician, a woodworker, just an avid tool guy, there's gonna be something in here for you. So stick around, let's take a look at all of it. Before we get into the Ulsa tools that they sent me, I want to ask y'all's opinion. I got this sent to me by a Mr. William Logan, and granted, there's going to be a larger antique tool section later in the video, but before I lose any of y'all, does anybody know what the hell this is? I guess this is kind of a uh, Mr. Pete mystery tool section. If y'all don't watch Mr. Pete, go check him out. Cool old dude, knows a lot, and he shares a lot of his knowledge. But anyways, I don't know what this is for. It locks, it's got that shape to it. It will be restored. Like I said, I just don't know what it is. So if y'all got any ideas, places to look, to start looking, let me know. Now, if you haven't heard, Ulsa Tools is not just tool organization anymore. They have stepped up their game. They have two different styles of ratcheting wrenches. They have a nice set of Allen keys, a huge heavy duty backpack, and probably even more that I just don't even know about at this time. They sent me all this stuff for review. Let's start with the simplest item, and that is these Allen keys that they sent. They are definitely long handled. You can get you an idea of the, the length. They have the ball in on the longer side, you know, which is nice because that's usually when you're trying to get something in quick. And then on this side, where you usually get more of your torque, they have a a unique design that's meant to get out stripped fasteners or help get them out. You know, when you're dealing with a stripped fastener, nothing's ever guaranteed, but this is definitely one of the steps you can take. Once I'm able to really use these more often and get a feel for if this little design does anything, we'll come back with a review. We got the Ulsa Tools Reversible Ratchet Wrench Set. This, this is a 12 piece set and it's a no skip set from eight to 19 millimeter. These are reversible, but there's no selector switch. The way you change the direction is by pushing down on the fastener you might have. It takes a lot of getting used to and there are some serious drawbacks with these, but as far as a quality of wrench, very very nice quality we'll get more into the flaws i found with those as well as the added benefits in their actual review right now let's take a look at this big monster backpack they sent me right, so if you're ingrained in the tool community at all you've probably seen these tools i'm showing you anyways now this is the ulsa tools backpack when they first sent me this backpack it was 89 dollars now on amazon i can't remember for sure i'll flash up a picture but i think they're asking $129 for this bag, or $119 maybe. And that's a pretty steep price when it comes to these tool backpacks because there's a lot of companies out there selling these backpacks for less than $100. That's the main reason why I'm not giving you a full-fledged review on this yet. For me to be able to recommend this backpack, I've really got to put this bag through its paces. That's just how I work with my channel. I'm not saying everybody has to. I do like this backpack because it is much larger than any of the other ones I've come across. An 18 inch crescent wrench sitting in there comfortably. But that's one big benefit I see this bag is you can hold some very, very large tools. Alright guys, so the next couple tools, and there's no rhyme or reason to this, I'm just picking stuff up off the floor, throwing it on the bench to give you a look at. Let's look at the Sonoto pliers. I was really impressed with these. I first heard about these through a guy named MD Lee, and he had these on his channel. He is in love with these, and the guy knows his pliers, okay? He's got every Orbis plier known to man. Uh, now he's on to Sonoto. Now these things are their duckbill pliers. I want to say they're 8 inch. There will be a link in the description, of course, if, you, if you're interested in them. I'll tell you what these remind me of, and I talked to some other guys that have had these pliers. Uh, Hard Knox Forge in particular and I said you know what they remind me of is the old channel lock and I'm not trying to down on channel lock because I love that they're still an American made company they're still cranking out tools at an affordable price but in order to do that they've cut some corners and one corner they've cut 
with their tools now compared to old is the the last grinding the finished grind on all the edges because if you buy a new pair of channel locks they will have sharper edges than what they used to 15 to 20 years ago it's just what they've got to do to stay competitive but these Sonoto pliers made in Japan really remind me of what channel lock used to be now in looking for those I came across these these are also Sonoto pliers but they are their uh, slip joint pliers I guess I would call them what I like about these is these are resin soft grip jaws they are non-marring they are also replaceable you can get the replacement jaws for like four dollars a piece and the whole pair of pliers was only ten dollars a piece next up we'll look at the doyle three-piece electrician screwdriver set now i cut off some of this because i wanted to see some other brands of insulated screwdrivers i've seen the shaft get smaller to allow for more insulation i want to make sure these didn't do that and you can see about a quarter inch down they don't they compare these directly to the Milwaukee three-piece set, which I also have. So we are going to be comparing these later on. Next up, I hollered at Starbon on Instagram and I said, hey, I've seen your products. I'm really interested in using them. Would you mind sending me a couple out to review? They said, sure, we'll send you a little sample pack out. Let's just say I've only had this for a couple weeks and I've used the ever-living shit out of it. I'm gonna put a full review out on this and how I use it, especially in wood turning, but it's not only that. This thick super glue, I had a valve stem blow out of my lawnmower tire. For me, it's an hour drive to the nearest town to hope they have something, you know, so I didn't wanna waste that much of my day. I got this thick gap filler Starbond super glue put it around there, shoved that sucker back in there, gave it a little twist, let it sit for about 20 minutes, and I put air in that tire. It is actually still holding air two days later, which is pretty damn nice. If I didn't want to wait, they, ha they also gave me the accelerator. If you don't know what super glue accelerator is, you put it on, let's say two pieces of wood, spray a little accelerator, stick it together, it's bonded, there's no waiting. Right, next random group of tools we'll look at this i actually won this set it's a drill and an impact they're 12 volt line brushless i got it 100 percent for free for participating in a survey of theirs it's a cool little program to get into maybe i'll do a video on it if some other people are interested now i wasn't guaranteed to win these i just was given a chance to win them. But I chose this 12 volt set because I, I don't have any tools in the Dewalt line anymore. Uh, pretty much right after I started the channel, I switched over to Ryo because I wasn't doing as many side jobs and I just didn't have a need for a full line of Dewalt tools anymore. And I've been very happy with my choice. But the thing that Ryobi lacks on quite a bit is how damn long their drills are. And they don't really have a 12 volt system. I picked these for the compactness the times you are in a tight corner a tight spot and you need something with enough power now do these have as much power as my 18 volt ryobi no they don't i've experienced it i've had this drill stall out with a 3 8 brad point bit going through some oak whereas the ryobi powered right through it but you can't beat the compactness of these and it's some of my first brushless tools so we'll see how that goes Next up, we got some tools by PB Swiss. Now, I haven't heard of PB Swiss. They are a Swiss-made tool company, and they put out some very quality stuff. They had something that they were basically asking people to review some of their products, and these are the two I selected. A little tiny dead blow type hammer, and you can put different hammer faces on it. Now, right now, I have a copper and an aluminum. They also have the hard plastics, the rubbers. You can choose endlessly. Is this a quality tool? Hell yes it is. The only thing I don't like is to change the faces. You gotta pound out these little pins. Kinda of be time consuming. It'd be nice if they just screwed on. The other tool I got from them were these long allens. Like, I like the long L keys. And I thought I would like this. They have a little bit less of an angle. It's not a 90, I think it's a 118 degree angle. And they're stubby. I thought I would use this more than what I have. But to be honest with you, totally honest with you, sometimes they just fall a little short. Sometimes you need that extra length. I love the angle on them. I don't like the shortness. 
but quality made tool hell yes probably some of the nicest allen keys i have so we got the pro stormer cheapest cordless ratchet on amazon it's a 12 volt comes with a single battery 40 bucks i paid for this thing and i was interested in the pro stormer brand for quite a while it's a uh, it's not too bad from what i've used it do i think it would stand up to daily professional mechanic use no i don't is it gonna do a good job for me here at home Fuck yeah it is and then i also just want to show off a few things my buddy neil the maintenance man sent over to me these are these craftsman usa western forge made crescent wrenches they just really impressed me i haven't had a crescent wrench i've probably liked as much as these they're nice and thin yet they're still a durable pair i've really enjoyed these thank you mr neil the maintenance man we had another subscriber by the name of michael i can't remember what his last name is exactly and i don't even know if he's ever actually told me but he said hey brad i like what you're doing over there i want to support the channel i've got a few extra tools that i don't even need i just happen to get them on a sale i mean who doesn't know about that issue one of them is the bauer corded of course rat tail grinder i've only used this for a month or so two months i love it so far we will review it we'll get more into it a tack life angle grinder now i haven't used this one at all yet but it's got the side switch which i like tack life is an okay brand i just don't like their business practices that's for another video and then the bauer heat gun it's got adjustable levels i'm thinking i'm gonna compare this directly with the drill master and see if the extra cost is worth it along with this he sent me a full bag of the hercules bauer and warrior grinding and cutting wheels so that may be a video coming up those videos take a little longer to make but i would really like to see if the cost of the hercules grinding wheels versus the warrior really makes a difference all right guys if you're wondering why we're going handheld because i just smashed my tripod so we're gonna finish this video out handheld and there's only a few tools left car plastic clip set i got from struggleville on a deal and also a set of four casters i got for like 16 dollars actually even less and these are the kind with the nice break those will come in handy for a future build and these i hate these goddamn car clips so now i can just rip them out put new ones in don't even have to worry about it these were a couple more deals i just happened to come across this is an extension for an angle grinder this is an angle finder and this is pretty nice it's nicer than what i expected i think i paid like eight bucks for this thing and it folds up goes in a nice little case here this i found this is actually a proto half inch ratchet Still sounds very very nice I plan on cleaning this up and it'll probably see some actual serious use because I love proto and I've got the 3 8 version of this which has just been a beast on to the antique tools now all right guys so this is the last group of antique tools that me and mr. William Logan worked out a deal on we kind of separated out into three groups for shipping reasons it's got two brace drills they're the rationing kind a couple squares which i'm interested to see who exactly makes these because i can't really tell right now with as dirty as they are this looks like a homemade marking gauge which is pretty cool it's the kind with the wedge a couple spoke shaves i'm not sure who makes these yet either They're outside caliper this is the mystery tool we looked at at the beginning and a starrett micrometer i'm really looking forward to cleaning this up and seeing how well it comes i guess these are also mystery tools to me uh pretty sure william told me what they were for but they're some kind of they look like masonry type chisels to me almost like something i would put in an sds gun to break up concrete but i'm not sure if you know anything more about these and then let me know and this is definitely not an antique tool but i want to show you all i picked up that stanley 3 8 120 position ratchet just because when the icon does come back whenever i get my uh, my replacement one they're supposed to send me or let me go pick up 
I do want to compare it to that. I want to see how much Stanley is stepping up their game. But this is just the last shipment. If you've kind of stuck with me, you've seen some other tool hauls you've seen, or even the live streams, you've seen some of the other tools that William Logan has sent. These right here are a couple that I've already restored or cleaned up as much as I'm going to clean up. Sometimes I don't like things I'm going to keep to be perfectly shiny. I don't mind them looking a little old. I just want them to be functional. And then last but not least, for those of y'all that do remember, is the big framing chisel or a slick as many would call it. Cleaned it up and I found out the brand. James Warnock. I found out this tool company was only a business from like 1890 to 1910 so this thing is over 100 years old and then i turned a little handle for it maybe not the best design but this is probably the fourth thing i ever turned when i got the little harbor freight mini lays that's my variety of a tool haul i got a little bit of everything in this little 8x10 shed and i and that's how i like it you know i like to dip my toes in the water of different things sorry that you had to go handheld for the end of it if you want 100 percent polished and perfect you got to go watch TV. You're not going to find it here on Brad's Workbench. We roll with the punches. We make do with what we got. And we have some fun doing it. So until next time, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button right there. And I'll holler at y'all next time. Peace! Well, shit.